Hi, my name is Regina Rapp. I'm the co-founder of Art Liberture Berlin, a curator, co-director and a researcher, an art historian as well. I'm Chris Lutz, and I'm a curator and co-director of Art Laboratory Berlin. DIY Hack the Punka came out of a series of meetings between artists, scientists, uh, and curators and art theoreticians in early 2018. In late 2017, Art Laboratory Berlin had had a three-day conference, Non-Human Agents, and several of the scientists who attended or took part in the conference expressed interest in working with artists. Unfortunately, uh, most of them didn't have their own labs but were working in as postdocs or doctoral students at the time. Uh, so it became very obvious that we would have to do this on a DIY basis. We brought together uh, the interested uh, scientists, Daniel Lamel, Nana McLean, among them, uh, together with several of the artists we've been working with over the previous years and discussed making a citizen science program and we chose the River Panka which runs about a uh, block from Art Laboratory Berlin's exhibition and venue space in part because it's a really interesting urban uh, river that also forms an important part of the local culture. Uh, it's really uh, one of the few green zones in the built-up areas of Berlin vetting. I'm very happy to see now that we are nearly four years existing as an art science group, the Hack the Panke. Well, as an art theoretician and a curator, I see a lot of translation in my part. Since we started in 2018, together with uh, my partner, Christa Lutz, uh, we tried to bring the group members together, the artists and scientists we have known already for, from previous projects. And we wanted to research interdisciplinary with the public. So my role was also a very practical one, like a facilitator, curator of the event program, like workshops, performances, walk and talks that we have done mainly in 2019, already in 2018. And I found it very important to bring also a very broad public together. And most of the time it, it succeeded that uh, we have a, a public taking part in these actions, be it microplastics or microbiodiversity or a performative act playing with a river punker. We had public from humanities or the science themselves or also local neighbors coming and attending our events. The first workshop was Unreal Ecologies, which was a collaboration between artist Kat Austin and biologist uh, Joanna McLean. The workshop is basically a, uh, a search for microplastics in the water of the Ponca River. Nets were placed in the river for a number of hours and then sived through and uh, for, uh, researched in a DIY chemistry lab that uh, Kat set up for us. The end result was actually finding fragments of microplastics in all the samples. Uh, while also getting to know a little bit more about what was in the river on a, um, on a microbial level. Hello, I'm Kat Austin. I'm a new media artist based in Berlin. And my work is uh, heavily uh, influenced by research, which I do, and thematically oriented towards exploring the human environment entanglement. So looking at how um, as humans, we interact with others which are beyond humans um, and what the consequences of those things, those interactions are and what it means to ourselves and the boundary between us and others. I've been part of DIY Hack the Panker from the beginning. Materially, as well as being part of the community, I have delivered a number of workshops um, relating to microplastics um, in the River Panka and also relating to sound explorations of the River Panka. I worked within the frame of the Science by Doing workshops as well, which we did with the local school, um, and I, I ran workshops there also. Hello, my name is Joanna McLean. I'm a microbiologist at GFZ Potsdam and I focus in my work on uh, microorganisms uh, connected to plastic in soil mostly and how plastic pollution affects the natural 
microbiome. I've uh, met the people from Hack the Panke in, I think, 2018. And... I was very interested because I live close by the Panka River, uh, so I knew the area and I also knew Art Laboratory Berlin as a place where a lot of transdisciplinary interesting uh, exhibitions take place and also collaborations and uh, yeah, I've been following them around. In 2018, I uh, met Kat Austin at DIY Hack the Panke. And we kind of matched uh, in, in our general research uh, idea and uh, managed to design uh, several workshops now on the topic of microplastics uh, involving um, the Panke River as a kind of site-specific research field. And uh, yeah, I... I found it very interesting to also get out of the comfort zone as a researcher instead of producing papers that are uh, read for a, a, yeah, a small amount of people. My name is Farah Peluso and uh, I'm an artist designer, a uh, bioartist based in Berlin. And I live here since 2014, working on biology, speculative design and with microorganisms basically with algae. Uh, since uh, I am uh, interested on in research in biology and uh, how to connect uh, uh, living, uh, how to connect uh, human beings with uh, other living organisms, uh, my research is mainly focused on algae uh, ecosystems. Uh, my contribute for uh, DIY Hack the Punk is, is focused on uh, and re discovering together which kind of algae are living in the water ecosystem of the Panke River. And we do this in two different, I mean, in a very multidisciplinary way, uh, because we combine the scientific research with uh, speculative design and DIY biology. So we uh, together uh, learn how to keep on growing the algae coming from the uh, the Panke River uh, water ecosystem uh, through the building of a DIY bioreactor, which is, uh, in general, it's, it's known as to be a very complex device that only scientists uh, are able to use for different reasons, but are able to use in uh, uh, in scientific environments, you know, like, uh, like laboratories. So the workshop, which is called Algajur, gives uh, the possibility to build a very simple version of this tool and to, to grow algae indoor as part also uh, of a new object that can be included in our daily spaces. I am India Mansour uh, and I work as a postdoc at the Freie Universität in Berlin as a microbial community ecologist. And my, the focus of my research is understanding the interactions of microorganisms with each other and with their environment in soil and river environments. Um, I've been involved in a few of the actions of the DIY Hack the Pinkin. Um, the first one was the microbiodiversities workshops. Um, there were uh, two of those. And what we did was um, went, went to the Penka first with a group of school kids and collected samples and investigated the river. So uh, we looked at a little uh, urban stretch of the river and we collected sediment and water column and floodplain samples. And we had a um, kind of field microbiology kit with us so that the kids could plate these different samples um, on different kinds of selective agar. Um, and we, while we were in the place, talked about observing the space that we were in um, and thinking about these different habitats that microorganisms can inhabit in the river and around the river. And then um, we let the plates grow, um, let, let the plates incubate so that the microorganisms could grow. And then uh, some time later, 
um, we all met up at the Freie Universität and then we looked at the uh, different colonies that grew and um, we talked about what the shape and the color and the morphology of these different colonies were and differences between plates where we had selected so we'd have more bacteria and more fungi. And then we also used those for a second workshop um, shortly after that was open to the public to discuss the micro, uh, microbial diversity in the river. I was also involved with a walk and talk um, with, and the focus of that walk and talk was um, to understand uh, on really long and uh, kind of broad scales, how the environment was shaped. Generally, the environment of Berlin and these kind of long geological processes that had led to shaping it, but then uh, zooming into the time that we're living in now, talking about processes of decay of natural material like leaves and also artificial and man-made materials. So what happens when plastic or cigarette butts are uh, thrown around the river and then start breaking down? And how do pieces of those things um, affect the environment, affect the ecology, and actually form the environment in some way? You know, when you have all these microplastic particles, that's a new piece of environment that's there. And yeah, that when we were walking along the river and collecting anthropogenic materials that we were finding and trying to think about the different ways that those materials um, might affect the river as we know it and be changing the landscape um, and the, you know, niches that are available for the organisms. Hi, my name is Sarah Hermanatz, and uh, I'm an artist based in Berlin. Uh, I'm originally from Canada, and I've been a uh, part of Hack the Panka project for several years uh, since the beginning. So in Hack the Panka, I've been involved in a number of the workshops, uh, as well as uh, performance work. Um, my work usually is related to performances and installations, and so those have been more what I've been contributing in general. So I did a workshop with um, a performance collaborator of mine, Nenad Popov, who is also a member of Hack the Panka. And in this workshop, we uh, took some methods from a performance that we've done together called Live Decomposition and used methods of performance and sampling to guide participants in um, practices of sample gathering and storytelling based on specific environments um, in order to create audiovisual impressions and um, generating possible like future scenarios, in this case for looking at what we think the potential futures of the Panka River could be. I was also involved in some of the workshops uh, with some of the scientists that are members of Hack the Panka, where we presented the microbiodiversity of the Panka River. So looking at samples of the soil, water, and sediment, and looking, examining those in, in various ways, both the ways to collect them and um, then how scientists study them. And that project also was with Farah Palooza, who is also an artist and designer. And in that workshop, I contributed in particular both working with gathering samples and the experience of being along the river, uh, as well as uh, making Winogradsky columns, uh, which are a really beautiful um, form of, of early science experiments where you collect mud into long columns and by adding a few simple materials to it, a source of carbon and a source of sulfur, you can create um, a really sort of striking visual object that is actually telling you a lot about different layers of um, microbial life that lives within the muds underwater. Um, and so we developed those and all the participants were able to take them home and see them develop on their own over time. For that workshop also, we created a zine, which was a lot of fun. I have a background in illustration and animation. And although now I'm mostly doing um, live and performative sort of three-dimensional things. Uh, going back to those visual arts roots was so much fun and working also with the other scientists and artists on that. And that zine 
was used as a part of the workshops of a few of the different workshops. Also uh, with uh, Nenad Popov, as I mentioned before, um, who I've done uh, do performances with audiovisual live performance, we um, created a new piece um, as a part of the Hack the Panka programming based on uh, a, a little journey that he and I took up into Brandenburg to find the source of the Panka River. The experience of that is what inspired us to create a room filling sculpture in which uh, water is cycling through various um, drain pipes and then moving back through. And it was uh, exploring a lot um, about systems and human interventions, as well as perhaps the disappointments that we found of finding an extremely um, un- impure and um, sort of sullied place at the supposed origin and both the disappointment and also the beauty of these sort of hybrid human, non-human places that then can be experienced together. That performance also led into creating a version of the river, so to speak, that was created as a performative stage and tool in that original performance and then was recreated in the Gustav Freitag Schule for a presentation there related to the workshops we t- taught to um, students there. Uh, my name is Nenad Popov. I'm a new media artist. Uh, I specialize mostly in audiovisual performances, uh, um, like technically and some installations, but thematically I'm very interested in uh, kind of uh, interfaces between science and art. I have done um, several collaborations uh, with other people involved in the project and um, uh, we did um, things like uh, performative installations, we did uh, various uh, workshops, special educational workshops for kids of the local school and um, a format that we called Walk and Talk. So my name is Elliot Morrison. I'm a uh, bioinformatician uh, with a background in biochemistry. Um, and yes, I've been involved in uh, the Hack the Panker project for a few years now, I think. So I um, did a joint talk with uh, Daniel Lamel from the FU in, in Berlin here. And we gave an outdoor walk and talk um, session, which was focused um, on uh, let's say environmental systems and uh, specifically walking along the Panka with a, a group of, of participants and we were um, stopping at different points and um, explaining from our scientific backgrounds um, our understanding of uh, these systems um, things like um, how um, nutrients like phosphate uh, or, or different nitrogen compounds get cycled through an environment um, how this can um, uh, change when you have a dynamic environment like a river, um, so something that is, is flowing and you have these uh, different uh, compounds actually um, moving. And uh, we also um, uh, got into some very interesting discussions, which were especially uh, coming uh, from, from uh, say, people who were maybe more critical about these human constructs, such as systems, um, which which is always appreciated because in science, uh, I think you tend to sometimes be a little bit blind to the constructs you're projecting onto a uh, system that might not have as a neat of lines as, as one uh, normally expects. So those were some very uh, interesting discussions that I, I enjoyed. Since DIY Aktopanke, it's very focused on collaborating with scientists at the same time. Um, we can also look at this algae under microscope and see the microscopic structure of this algae. The reason why I'm interested to do this is because the algae that are living in the river of in the Panke River are called diatoms. Are and these algae are 
very famous uh, for for having a very uh, complex and beautiful structure, which is called a uh, frastol. And uh, the geometry of this structure, uh, since many years already, it's been, it's been studied by engineers, architects and designers to understand how to implement these shapes, uh, these, these geometrical forms, into the architectural and uh, design application. For me, it's very important uh, because it's one of the, let's say, rare possibilities, occasion, that uh, different actors, including the public, can be together and, uh, and uh, uh, addressing uh, and uh, talking about topics that in general are very much a possibility only for scientists and to do in only in specific uh, possib- uh, occasions like academic uh, environments or in, in the lab. So I um, I feel very lucky and grateful to be part of this project uh, because it keeps uh, uh, the possibility to to go deeper in some in some topics, but at the same time also give public the possibility to to come closer and have discussion with them and from them also receive uh, always because I. I've been many times with our walk and talks uh, and workshops, and we always receive uh, very interesting feedbacks from from the public. So uh, for me, it's uh, uh, yeah this this aspect of openness uh, towards the public uh, and discussion together. It's uh, it's a very important. When I started to write the project for DIY Act the Punk. Uh, and when I decided to to propose the 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 algatur workshop, I didn't know yet which kind of algae was living in the water. Of course, I was sure that something interesting was coming out, uh, but I didn't know yet that the algae living in the water was the diatom algae. These organisms for me are very important because they are the first algae microorganism I start to study. Uh, already when I was studying for my graduation project uh, for the university. Yeah, the only way to discover this was because I had the possibility to work with the with the India Mansur, which is the, one of the scientists involved in the project. We, we did this together in the lab. So India gave me the possibility to go deeper and discover and discover this, yeah, this beautiful thing. And I think that without having the, the facilities and the knowledge of India and this, without discussing together, we, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand alone. Well, I think um, we live in an era when, especially in urban environments, it's really easy to be really disconnected from um, natural spaces and from organisms in their natural environments. Um, although I do think that at the same time, um, that it's possible to really live in a bubble away from those things, that there is a great deal of curiosity about those things. And the DIY Hack the Panka Project creates, um, spaces where people can, uh, engage in that curiosity, where they can, um, come and interact with the river and also learn some tools to investigate um, different processes and different things that are happening along the river um, through, um, yeah, like hacked scientific protocols and through just creating space where there's a group of different people that have different types of expertise or different creative ways of thinking about that space so that we can all come together and with the different perspectives of these groups that are coming for workshops and for walk and talks, uh, bring our knowledge together and kind of um, all come a little bit deeper in knowing the Pankin and knowing the river. And I think it's really um, important also to that there is space created where these kind of relationships can be fostered because um, natural spaces um, 
are more likely to be protected if people care about them, if people know about them, if people have relationships with them. Um, and so it's really nice to be engaged with the art laboratory who are um, consistently kind of creating space for people to foster these sorts of relationships and also to make them deeper. Yeah, I think that that's a critical element of protecting biodiversity. DIY Hack the Panker is, uh, is of great importance to me. Um, for a start, it's really wonderful to be part of such an eclectic uh, transdisciplinary community and I feel that my personal practice has benefited greatly from the exchange with the other DIY Hack the Pankers. The A lot of the concepts that I work on have been um, affected by my interactions with DIY Hack the Panker and the participatory manner in which we carry out our research as DIY Hack the Panker. So one of the great things is that, you know, the DIY Hack the Panker community works together developing um, new ideas. And then we take them out and we work with participants who come to the workshops. Um, and by doing that, by discussing the thematics that we're exploring in the workshops, we get all of these new ideas that we create with the participants as well. And so every time we deliver a workshop through DIY Hack the Panker, new ideas come through, not only for us, but also for the participants who join us. First of all, I think it's it's a great opportunity to meet people from different uh, fields and different expertises uh, that also bring different questions on a topic that we agreed on, which is a very physical object of research or the Panka River is a is a body that connects to um, the neighborhood, the people using it, the species living in it or around it, and I think it's just a very nice kind of field to explore together with other people. It's it's nice because everyone has a has a connection to it or. Um, yeah, asking questions. I think the intersection of, of science and art is, of course, a critical um, uh, thing that uh, is not only important, but also very fascinating to me personally. And um, so Art Laboratory, uh, you know, of course, deals with this in a lot of different ways. But the Hank, Hack the Panka project I especially like because it's not only combining uh, scientific perspectives and artistic perspectives, but you have the added um, almost uh, psychogeographic elements and the historical elements of, you know, uh, focusing on this river in a city like Berlin with the history that is unique to the city and um, and being able to, to interact with this river um, in, in all of these different dimensions, I think, is a very, uh, a very interesting uh, aspect of this project. I find that when I create works entirely on my own, I have very specific ways of approaching a topic as well as responding to a specific kind of environment, in this case, the Panka River. And collaborating always helps me be really challenged in what I do and how I respond to things. And with Huck the Panka, I've found that engaging with the river, both myself and through the knowledge and experiences of the other participants, as well as the people involved in the workshops, uh, members of the public, as well as students, um, has really helped me engage with it, not entirely differently, but in a more enriched way, and has really led to projects and workshops that, um, that I never would have just expected in isolation, and being able to sort of see and experience the Panka River um, newly again kind of panke is very kind of um specific kind of river it's very like uh, particular because uh it's uh it goes through the city it's very kind of urban river so to say but then also it has been um changed and uh, shaped by humans uh, immensely during its uh, lifetime so it's very interesting to see the interaction between the river and um, the people around it our relationship to 
nature and how how that was changing in past uh, few centuries because uh, okay uh, there is like old geological history of it then we came to uh, when then we make a huge jump to industrialization area and then already it suddenly it had kind of a, a utilitarian value to us so suddenly it was like rerouted its banks were like uh, reinforced to shape our needs it also became extremely like neglected and uh, polluted but then after that period we kind of um, rethinked our relationship to to nature and it's also visible in the river panke so suddenly it was being cleaned again uh, rerouted again <laughs> and right now we have this also like even newer ideas where we were thinking of just like letting it be and letting it be like thing in its own and there are certain plans right now how to rewild the panke and let it flow through its like natural flows my interest in interdisciplinary research comes definitely also from the context of posthumanism and uh, i really favor the approaches by rosie bright dotty and i take this basically as a call and i see with diawa hakta panke that we have come to a good part uh, to fulfill the mission basically for a radical opening up interdisciplinary work between the humanities and the sciences. And I consider DIY Hack the Panke as an open research platform, actually non-hierarchical um, structures uh, with a radical openness. So I find it quite inspiring to apply this mission of the radical interdisciplinary approach uh, disciplines opening up and then also actually going beyond academia. Part of the experience of going up to the source of the panka or not even being able to find the source based on GPS coordinates and what in theory was supposed to be it, the almost the disappointment of things like finding a parking lot and a shopping center um, it really influenced how we made the performance and the, the, the sort of sculptural object we built around it, like with the kinds of objects that we used. Um, and also in the actual performance, as we were doing these audiovisual engagements with the water flowing and different sort of audiovisual like, like systems through cameras and feedback, um, eventually a form of feedback developed where the sand that was slowly getting through one of the filters and going down through the river eventually actually clogged up and burnt out the motor that was running our entire installation. And the death of that motor, that kind of human intervention that we were using to run this experience, um, that kind of point of failure created the necessary ending of of our performance and in some ways it was like it was disappointing and it was sad because it was creating the end of our attempt to recreate this river but at the same time it was an interesting very human ending that we had been a hand in creating and also it's like the real river continued to run alongside and this was just our imagining of the river it uh it was stopped but the real one isn't being stopped by all this uh engagement of people it just keeps flowing and I just found that such a a, a nice moment of like I, I, I like projects where you're surprised and have to think about what's happened and um it was I really liked it there's quite a bit of graffiti along the um very urban parts of the panka and there's one that says uh the pink's not dead it just smells bad <laughs> And I think that that's that's funny because uh, it is in this um, it the quality of the panke used to be quite a bit worse actually, and we still see when we're there so much trash in the river. I mean, I pulled a hair dryer out of the um, out of the panke once. Like, there's just all sorts of garbage in there, but it definitely is a living space. Um, and I think that it's funny that somebody. 
um, you know, recognized, recognized that. And they're like, no, no, like this is, this is our panka. And like, maybe it doesn't smell great and maybe it's a little dirty. Maybe we've got a ways to go, but it's not dead. <laughs> Well, as an art historian or an art theoretician, I'm very interested in researching. And the whole time since 2018, I was also observing and um, using these enriching experiences with uh, my colleagues from Diova Hack the Panke to reflect about hybrid art, um, art science, and this really radical interdisciplinary research. I mean, in this case, we use the river around Adlibeter Berlin, flows from north to south into the Spree, and um, we hacked it in different ways. So I was interested, for instance, how artists like Sarah or Kat or Farah would hack the water in terms of hydrofeminism or in terms of artistic research working with living matter, or also workshopology or actually do it uh, with others. So next to the DIY aspect, uh, the Devo aspect. And I'm very fascinated to be uh, absolutely fully emerged. So being part of the group, facilitating events, observing actually the reception of the audience, their contributions, again, their radical interdis interdisciplinary contributions. And I also have recently published um, several papers and articles. So basically here again, I try to be a translator um, from my own perspective, from art theory, uh, hybrid art, uh, to write about uh, this research that we have been doing for the last three, four years. It's interesting how, uh, how artists and scientists within the group have uh, collaborated together on projects both inside and outside of the group itself. Uh, leading to uh, new artworks or new uh, ways of viewing scientific and artistic research. Also, uh, we've had a really enthusiastic response from the public. Uh, the choice of the Panka River uh, was due to its location near Art Laboratory Berlin, but also because we noticed in the neighborhood of Berlin Wedding, the Panka River's banks were a green zone in uh, an otherwise rather built-up area and often uh, in a very special place for the local public, uh, especially in the spring and summer and autumn. So there, was a, there has been a constant interest in uh, the workshops and other research projects along the Panka River. So now we're actually preparing this Die Abahakta Panka exhibition, Learning from the River. And uh, it is very important for Chris and me to carry out the documentary exhibition because we have gathered so many materials. We have had so many conversations and there are really an interestingly um, interdisciplinary results coming together. And I see actually a lot of publication possibilities ahead, be it articles, papers, or essays. And as I said at the beginning, I just very fascinated with this non-hierarchical, radically interdisciplinary crowd that we are and we hope even despite a pandemic uh, we can continue our work.